All right, guys, it's Andy Staines here, and uh, I just want to have a quick talk about um, transposing formula. And then this is in particular relation to electrical installation calculations. Um, there's quite a lot of times when you will be given a formula or you'll know a formula, and you're going to have to use it to solve some electrical properties, or quantities, or values, but the formula isn't set out in the right format for you. So, for instance, if we have the formula P equals IV, which means that power is equal to current I times voltage V. So, that's all great, but what if we want to find out I? So, we have a problem there. So, I wants to be made the subject of the formula, but it's not in the right place. It's not on the left hand side of the equal sign and it's not on its own, it's mixed up with V. What we want to end up with is a formula which starts with I equals. Um, let's give a reason for this. Maybe we have got a cooker, okay? We've got our lovely cooker customer wants to have installed. Okay, I'd be very happy if I had a cooker like that. Absolutely amazing. Cakes inside and everything. This cooker has a overall power rating of, let's say, 6 kilowatts. And we have also know that we're going to connect it to our 230 volt supply. But what we don't know is how big and thick the cable needs to be. So that's the question. How big a cable do we need to use? And to find that out, to, to choose the cable, the first thing we need to know is what the current is. I. How many amperes? So this is the formula we use because it's got P for power. Okay, there's our P for power. It's got V for voltage and it's got I for current, the missing thing. But we need to transpose this formula. Okay, we need to carry out a transposition to make I the subject. And that's the tricky bit. There are lots of different techniques you can use. Okay, some people use a triangle method. Some people use the change the side, change the sign methodology. Um, all of which are perfectly valid and will be really useful. But they only take you part of the way. Um, I'm just going to quickly um, just note down the triangle formula because it can be really useful for simple equations, for simple stuff. So our triangle method is where we write, draw a triangle like so. And in the top section of the triangle, we write our subject, which is P. And then in the bottom, we write our factors, the things we are multiplying together. K, I, and V. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little multiply sign in there just to show that I and V are multiplied. Now, the idea is with this is you cover up the bit that you want to find out. So, for instance, let's, uh, let's make, make a little blob there. Okay, we, we cover up the bit we want to we want to find out. So if I really come on, it's not going to work. It worked earlier. I swear it. If we cover up the bit we we want to find out. So let's go back to our I. We cover that up. What are we left with? P and V. And P is over V. So that means that I is equal to P over V. Now that does work, but that what that doesn't do is tell you how you got there and why you got there. So that's what we're going to look at next. So let us get ourselves a nice fresh page and let's go and write our formula at the top as we were given it. P equals I times V. So what we need to do here is we need to get I on its own. This can be the first step. We also want it on the left hand side of the equal sign, but that's less problematic. There are two key things to make I the subject. 
So that's what we're going to do. That's the, the phrase. Make the subject of the equation. It must be one on its own. Two must be on top. What I mean by that is not on the bottom of a fraction. Okay, so we, we don't want to end up with one over i. Okay, that would be annoying. Okay, we want to find out what i is, not what one over i is. Okay, so we don't want that. And finally, we want it on left of the equals sign. So we want it in this position here, okay? Not in that position there. So what we want to end up with is a nice formula which says I equals something or other. Okay, so there's a few steps to take to get us there. So let's bring our formula back. P equals I V. Now, what we're going to use is a method of cancellation. Okay, the cancellation process is logical, it's clear, and it can be used for any type of equation, no matter how complex. You can use it for addition, subtractions, multiplications, divisions. You can use it for roots and squares, and all sorts of difficult uh, bits and pieces. You can use it where you have brackets, where you don't have brackets, in fractions, etc., etc. So this is a really, really effective and powerful tool. And if you learn it, you'll be able to deal with any equation you get thrown at you. So what we're going to do is we're going to, going to change the way the formula looks by cancelling bits out. And there is one fundamental rule we must obey. What we do to one side, we must, this is really important, do to the other. Okay, and the reason that is, is this is an equation. It has an equal sign in the middle. So whatever's on one side must equal what's on the other side. Okay, so we don't have greater than or less than symbols or kind of proportional to or not equal to, whatever that is. We, we don't have those. Okay, what we're going to have is just simply um the equal sign in the middle and the equal signs can stay the whole way through and because of that we need to make sure we keep the formula the equation balanced at all times so the first thing we want to do is get i on its own okay it's so on the top it's not if we were to draw a line here okay it's not on the bottom is it if we draw a line here as well, there's nothing dividing into I or V, there's nothing dividing into P at the moment. But we want to get it on its own, so we want to get rid of V. Now at the moment, V is multiplying against I. So we do a little multiply there, just to remind us. Normally don't show multiplication signs in algebra equations or formulae. We just have I, V, means I times V. Sometimes you might see a dot, but let's not worry about that for now. So what I'm going to do is, because V is a multiplier, to get rid of it, I'm going to divide this side of the equation by V. So I'm just putting it under the line. Okay, So V over V, well that's multiplied by V, divided by V. Well, it's like V never existed. It cancels V out. This is the really important thing. Remember what we've got here, what we do to one side, we must do to the other. Divided this side of the equation by V, must also divide this side of the equation by v. So what that does is it cancels out v on this side by placing v on the other side. And what you might notice is that v has gone from being a multiplier on this side, i times v, to a divisor on the other side. So it's now p divided by v. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write this out again underneath with the cancelled out bits missing. p over v equals i okay nice and simple but 
We've got I on its own. It's above the line, as in it's not a divider. Divisor, it is above the line, but it's it's not on the left hand side. So there's no big magic trick here. All we do is we just swap places. Okay, so we just move, reverse, like do a little mirror image of our equation. So now we can say that there for i is equal to p divided by v. Excellent. So what that means is we can now solve our equation. Our problem, the problem was we wanted to know how much current was drawn by a 6 kilowatt cooker when it's uh, connected to a 230 volt supply. So let's add ourselves something else here and let's put that in. So our, and we started off with P equals IV. We transpose that formula to be I equals P over V. And now we're going to put the values in. I equals P was 6 kilowatts, which is 6,000 watts. And we divided that by 230 volts. And then, because my mass is not amazing in my head, let's, uh, let's just get the old calculator up. And we go 6,000 divided by 230 equals oh, we've got 26.086 or 26.09 if we round to two decimal places. Okay, let's get rid of that. So therefore, I equals 26.09 amperes. That's really handy because now we know that we're going to need a select a cable which is capable of carrying 26.09 amperes in the installation circumstances that, that we choose. So what do we do? Just a quick recap. We take the identify what it is what we want to find. So very often if I'm doing this I will underline or circle what I want to make the subject of the equation. We try and then get rid of the other bits and pieces. In this case, we want to get rid of V. So because V is currently a multiplier, we divide this side by V. Because I've divided this side by V, I must also divide the other side by V. V over V is essentially 1, isn't it? Okay, it cancels out, it has no actual effect. We've multiplied i by v and then we divided i by v. So we've, it's as if we never existed. And then we have our formula p over v equals i. And then we just do a simple swap places to end up with our formula that we're going to use i equals p over v. Um, we'll have a look at different examples of how we might use this in different circumstances where we've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, where we have brackets, maybe we have roots and squares, or we're dealing with fractions. Uh, but this is a, certainly a good place to start at, and this is a skill that you need to learn. Okay, If you are going to be dealing with uh, formulas, mathematical formulas, uh, formulas for electrical quantities, you need to learn how to do the manipulation, the transposition. The, the only alternative is that you actually have to end up learning every single formula out uh, or every single version of a formula. So you need to know that P equals IV. You'd also need to know that I equals P over V and that V equals P over I. And that's three things that you'd need to learn. And for every formula in the book, you've got to do the same thing. V equals IR, I equals V over R, R equals V over I, etc, etc, etc. So all you need to do is to learn the process. Okay, if we know, learn the process of how to transpose a formula, you only need to learn the basic version, and then you can transpose that. Um, okay, hope you find this useful. All the best.